where Satan's star at me or her. I love that Revelation chapter 4 where John saw the door standing open in heaven and then the voice came like a trumpet saying, come up here and I will show you things to come. Mm -hmm. So God's inviting us into these encounters. He's inviting us to be surrendered, yielded to His Spirit. Lord, let me Shalom, and welcome to the Prophetic Witness Broadcast. Coming to you from Prayer Mountain in the Ozarks, near wonderful Branson, Missouri. We're blessed to live here yes, we in the are. Ozarks. It's a beautiful Praise place to his call name. home. And of course, Shelly's the co-host. She's usually with me, my daughter. But we have Joshua Mills, who is originally from Toronto, Yes, Canada. thank you for having me today. Oh, we're, we're excited to have, to have you. It's beautiful here in the Ozarks, and it it's is wonderful beautiful. being here in the glory. It is, <laughs> and it's a very special place, these Ozarks, yeah. you know. Lots of people love the Lord. And yes. um, it, it, I, I go away and then I come back and I say, thank you, God, for letting me live here. Bless <laughs> the Lord. But there's lots of things we thank God for. And one of him, the things I thank him for is the ministry of Kenneth e. Hagen in my life. Right. I uh, was baptized with the Holy Spirit under his ministry in April 1967. I remember. Oh, how many years is that now? Oh. Wow. 2021, quite a few years, but you'd think I'd stumble up on a few things in all these years. <laughs> right. And um, this is one of the, the, the when, when, that, when things were a little bit weird and people were prophesying things about the church being weak and this and that and all right. of that. But always I heard from Brother Hagen that before Jesus comes, going to be a great move of God, great yes, outpouring. Absolutely. Now, I want to read a rather lengthy prophecy uh, through Kenneth E. Hagen. Um, but this one, it's the birds and the fish prophecy show. Oh. oh, one of my favorites. But the title heard like this, that. Oh, you know, <laughs> this is <laughs> good. <laughs> You're on the edge of it, like standing on a creek bank about to jump in. You'll give the more earnest heed unto the things which you've heard. Not only those things you've heard about faith and healing. But those things which you've heard about the Holy Spirit and those things which you've heard about angels and things you've heard about divine visitation. For remember that it was prophesied of Joel of old that in the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And upon my handmaidens will I pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. Young men, young women will prophesy and the anointing and the outflow of the Spirit of God shall be great and amazing in those days for there shall be a visitation of angels. Be not afraid, but yet take heed in those areas for Satan himself has at times come as an angel of light. But examine things in the light of the scriptures and walk in the light of the word of God. Sometimes an angel will give you direction even in your finances and the direction that would save your life, as in the case of the shipwreck of Paul, and direction concerning ministry as the salvation of Cornelius in his household, and Philip as the angel spoke to him to go down to Gaza, and the Ethiopian was converted. And so in these days there shall be a mighty manifestation of the Spirit, and the work that God intended should be done in these last days shall be accomplished. For the time is short and things must be speeded up. You'll learn much faster spiritual things than in those of yesteryear. And you'll develop much faster. And it'll be said of some they just virtually matured overnight. And they shall go forth to speak in the name of the Lord because they understood the principle of faith. They'll understand the principles of the kingdom and they'll understand the laws of God and they'll operate and minister in that area and nothing will be hidden from them. Hallelujah. And uh, this is rather long and I'm not going to read all of it, but it does prophesy this, not only hundreds, but thousands and millions 
but will be, oh, here, I'll, I got to get this. The Spirit of the Lord will flow like a mighty river. Flow like Thank a mighty Jesus. river. God. Yea, yes. the Spirit of God will flow like a mighty river. Yes. yes. And many, not only hundreds, not only thousands, but millions will be swept into the flow of that river. And they shall flow forth in praise and glory. Glory Thank to God. For the Jesus. glory you, of the Lord is in manifestation. Yes. The glory of the Lord will be seen on the face of the saints. Yes. The glory of God shall shine until men will walk in a place of business and women will walk into a place in business and people will fall on their knees and cry out to God. Though they open not their mouths, for the glory of God will shine through them. Yea, the glory of God will shine through them. The glory of God will shine through for the manifestation of his power and the manifestation of his glory is reserved unto this hour. If it could be told you, be told you in a way that you could see it, even with the eyes of your spirit, if it could be displayed at this moment before you in a tangible form that you could see with your physical eye, it would be very difficult for you to believe that which shall shortly come to pass. But, Put your ears up, your antennas. As you walk with the Lord, as you prepare your heart, as you feed upon his word, as you listen to what the Spirit of God says, your heart shall be prepared and your mind will be changed until you will flow in the supernatural as naturally as a bird flies through the air. Wow. And you'll flow in the supernatural as naturally as a fish will swim in the water. And you'll flow in the supernatural naturally as you breathe the very air. You'll not be conscious of your faith. You'll not be conscious of what's going on around you, but rather you'll be conscious of the flow of the Spirit. Mm. And He will wow. manifest Himself Thank you, Lord. And he will accomplish that which he desires. For you see, these are the last days and this is the end time. And what is done must be done quickly and it will be done. And the hearts of many will be caused to rejoice. Thank so you, rejoice, rejoice, be glad and praise the Lord and prepare your hearts and let him prepare you for that which he has prepared for you. Mm. And so walk in it. Thank you, Lord. You shall walk in it. You shall run. You shall fly. Thank you, Jesus. Literally speaking. <laughs> and you shall enjoy the fullness wow. of that which is prepared for you. Thank you, Lord. There's you see so why I have this original that word. <laughs> why I have these treasures here? Mm -hmm. yes. We'll be glad to make you some copies. Yeah. Thank you. Because once I had a vision, open eyed vision, I'll not go into the whole vision. I didn't see Jesus, but I heard everything he said and I saw what he talked about. He said, I brought you to the feet of the leading prophet in the land when you didn't even know there was such a thing as prophets. Right. And I didn't. Amazing. So he called him, Jesus called Brother Hagin, the leading prophet in the land. He would get me to tell parts of that uh, vision. Yeah. He'd call me up and say, but don't tell that one part. Don't tell that one part <laughs> that he was the leading prophet yeah. in the land. Yeah. But uh, I trust his prophecies. Proven. He's a proven right. prophet. And so, um, and there's glory, there's glory on that word. <laughs> yes. You know, there's a lot of things people can fake, but the one thing you can't fake is the manifest presence of God. No. That's the truth. You know, and when the glory comes, you know that's God speaking. Yes. You get a witness of it yes. in your spirit. Your spirit begins to leap. Yes. Because you're connecting with that realm of who he is. <laughs> yes. It's amazing. It is amazing. It's an invitation. It's an invitation. As you're reading that, it's like I can sense this, in, this invitation of the Spirit to come into these things. Jesus said through that, he said, you're going to walk in this. Okay, yes. yes, Lord, here I am. I want to walk in this. Yes. You're going to fly. Yes, Lord, here yeah. I am. I want to fly. I want to yes. fly in this realm. God, I want to enter into what you've spoken, what you've prophesied. I'm here, God, to give myself to you in every way. Yes. Whoa. And we're going to be teaching on that in these, uh, yes. uh, I think we'll probably go even into April with it. Um, the door to many of these things is tongues. Right. Speaking in tongues. Right. People don't understand the scope of it. The, I got that from Brother Hagen. They don't know the value of it. But we're going to talk right. about it, Shelley, and we'll get you to share especially about that. 
uh, speaking to yourselves in mm -hmm. psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. But uh, while we've got you with us, uh, Joshua, um, Brother Hagen prophesied, and we read about it mm -hmm. last month, last week, rather. We'll read more prophecies about it, that there would be the manifestation. Right. And shall we read uh, there from uh, Philip? Acts. Oh, uh -huh. Philip, okay. But, but now, I'll set the stage for you. Oh. Philip, one of the apostles, had been called to Samaria, uh, and uh, there he preached Christ unto them and had miracles. Then the angel, as Brother Hagin pointed out in here, the angel told him to go down to Gaza. So he went down to Gaza. And there he found the Ethiopian eunuch who had come up from Ethiopia uh, because uh, uh, Solomon had sent back some Jews with the Queen of Sheba. So they then uh, heard about, and evidently he, he had uh, converted to Judaism. Mm -hmm. So he came up and he was reading Isaiah 53. And uh, so... Philip talked to him about yes. it, and he said, here's much water. Yes. Well, I, I think it's interesting that it says he yeah. preached Christ to him, and in that he had preached about being baptized in water. Yes. So go so ahead. So that was, and he Re said, yeah. what prevents what, what me? What is the scripture here, Shel? Well, this is uh, Acts chapter 8, and um, I'll begin reading with uh, verse number 37. And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. What an invitation. He talked about invitation. Yeah. Yeah. He said, here's much water. Mm -hmm. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, bum, 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 <laughs> The Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. Now, that's as wow. natural what as a bird in the air. What do you yes. think that? Or uh, fish in the sea. Ethiopian yeah. eunuch thought. I wonder if he got double dipped. He's <laughs> 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 coming up out of the water. All of a sudden, like, Philip's what? gone. He went back down. I might have fallen you know? back in the water. I mean, I don't know, but he saw it. And right. he, don't you know that when he went back to Ethiopia, that marked it for him? Yes, right. absolutely. And I thought about the Spirit and the Word agree. Uh -huh. They were teaching right. the Word it, bringing exactly. it to the forefront. What does this Isaiah mean? And then the Spirit of the Lord endorsed it. Yes, yeah. exactly. Spirit of the Lord. You can't, you can't separate it. Uh, now, Brother Hagin talked about, he talked about these moves of God that would come. Right. Some of the things he said right in this one we just read, our faces are going to shine with the glory. Just walk into the store. Right. right. And, and our, our yes. faces are shining. Yes. People fall down before God. Then he would often prophesy and it would come through. Uh, there, there's going to be such a manifestation of the glory in the services that people would walk in the back door and if they didn't have a leg, it would grow on. If they didn't have an arm, it would grow on. Yes. Right. Creative miracles. Creative, Creative miracles. miracles. Amazing. Yes. And almost every single time he would talk about translation, mm -hmm. like Philip. Mm -hmm. And as you pointed out as we were talking, Joshua, uh, some other people were translated in the Bible, right? Oh, there's... So many scriptures. You know, when we start talking about it, Ezekiel was translated. He was translated into the throne room of God. In the he saw the glory. There was times Ezekiel was translated into the valley of dry bones. Remember exactly. that? Ezekiel yeah. 37? Exactly. Because he was, he was over in Iraq. Right. And so God took him back right. over Israel. And that was a, that was a, there was prophetic purpose, intercessory purpose behind that translation because God wanted Ezekiel to prophesy and speak over the dry bones, speaking over Israel, yes. the intentions, the heart purposes of God. Yes. And something I've discovered with translation is that you can be translated ahead of time. You can be translated back in time. You can be translated to the third heavens. You can also be translated like to other Paul. nations and other places. Just like Paul. Exactly. He said, in the body, out of the body. I don't know, but I was there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Joshua, the high priest, was translated into the courtroom of heaven. Mm -hmm. um, we read about Isaiah being translated into the throne room mm -hmm. of God. And then we come over into the New Testament and we see translations happening with Philip, like you mentioned. And we also see other translations, even of Jesus himself being translated. Oh, yes, yes. We see, you know, a crowd pressing in towards him. That and all of a sudden he just disappeared through the crowd. Um, a scripture that the Lord gave me in John chapter 20 Look at this, verse 19. It's speaking about Jesus appearing to his disciples after the resurrection. It says, the same day at evening, 
being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, mm -hmm. where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, peace be with you. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. The doors wow. were shut. The doors were locked. Mm -hmm. The windows were locked. Mm -hmm. But that was not a problem for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I was asking God about this. I was like, what, how did Jesus get through the wall? And the Lord spoke to me. He said, well, he's the door. Mm -hmm. He is the door. If you are the door, you don't, what other door do you need? <laughs> Jesus is the door. So yeah. he just walked right up to that wall and just let himself in. You know, he's, sure. he's the door. And the revelation that we have now as believers that receive Jesus Christ in our life, we have the door living on the inside of us. So the possibilities of God are available to us through the door of Jesus Christ, through the power, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit of God. We have the ability to access places in the Spirit, not by self-will, not no, by our no. own initiation. You don't decide to do it. It's as the Spirit wills. Absolutely. It's as the Spirit wills. We yield to God. And then God begins to direct. And God begins to navigate. And God gives those invitations like what you read. And all we have to do is just enter in. Um, I love that Revelation chapter 4 where John saw the door standing open in heaven and then the voice came like a trumpet saying, come up here and I will show you things to come. Mm -hmm. So God's inviting us into these encounters. He's inviting us to be surrendered, yielded to his spirit. And I was sharing with you, you know, this year when there's been so much lockdown or last year when there's been so much lockdown and in the natural country saying this border's closed, that border's closed, you have to stay here, you have to stay there. God's given us a better way to travel. God's given us a supernatural way to travel that does not get locked down. Yeah, but, but still, it's not at your own initiative. It's not at our own initiative. No, not do, at all. Do you have enough time to tell us about the China one? Yeah, I want to tell you about that. All right. Because I was, I had received a prophetic word from the Lord, and the word was that I was, the Lord was going to take me on a trip, and it wasn't going to be by boat or donkey or ship or plane or train. I mean, all the natural methods of transportation were canceled out. And the word that came was, that God was going to take me on a trip and I would come back with natural evidences of the trip that had been taken. And so I was pressing into that word. And actually the way that I pressed into it was through spending time in prayer and praying in the spirit. And I know you're going to talk about that and about what that does to open up the spiritual realm. But I'd posture myself just yielding to the Lord. And that's a long testimony. But basically a little while later, I was ministering at an Assemblies of God church in Pensacola, Florida. And we had done the whole meeting and God moved. It was wonderful. But at the very end of the meeting, I, I began walking through the center aisle and releasing words of knowledge that the Lord was giving me for different people that were there. And all of a sudden, something came out of my mouth that I had never spoken before. And I began to prophesy translation and transportation to the third heaven and to the nations. I would never said that before. What an unusual thing to state. And I, as soon as I declared it, instantly... I was up out of my body in Pensacola, Florida, and I was standing in an elevator that was packed full of people in China. Now, I didn't know it was China at the moment that that happened, but I knew that I was somewhere else. And people say, Brother Joshua, was this like, were, were you physically there or were you just spiritually there? Well, I was definitely spiritually there, but also I was there just like I'm here at the table with you. I mean, I could smell it. I could see it. I could feel it. I was there. The doors open on the elevator. Everybody gets off at the lobby level. And I, I end up in this, uh, like a lobby of a business complex. And I'm trying to figure out, God, what is this all about? Because there was no preparation. Like the Lord didn't tell me he was going to take me to China. He didn't tell me that he was going to, in an instant, lift me from the meeting that I was in the middle of doing in Florida. It was a nighttime meeting and now it's daytime in China. And so I'm standing in the lobby level. And that scripture came to mind that says, those that are the children of God are led by, by the, the Spirit, Spirit of God. Is. And that's exactly what the Lord did. And he literally led me out on the street. I walked down the street, led by the Spirit of in God. In China. In China. How did you know and, it was China? Well, okay, so this is the thing. All the, I, we had been, I'd never been to China before, but I had been to Hong Kong. Uh -huh. And there was a lot of Chinese writing. There were signs. I mean, it very much looked like the Chinese mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. and I knew it was in Hong Kong. And the people appeared to be Chinese. The people appeared to be Chinese. Anyway, I, I ended up in another business uh, office building that was like a business building, and the, the Spirit of God led me in there, into this business. I walked past the front reception area, back into a back room where there was a bunch of Chinese people gathered having a prayer service. Now, they spoke Chinese. They were praying in tongues. I had no natural understanding of the Chinese language. The Lord had not given me the Chinese vocabulary, but I, again, prayed in the Spirit. At the very end of this prayer meeting, a man comes to me. I'm trying to make a long story very short. 
A man comes to me and hands me his business card. So I take it and I, I give him my business card. You know, he hands me his and I put the business card in my pocket and don't think anything of it. I end up back uh, in, in Florida, in my physical body. At right this back point, in the pulpit. Standing in the same place that I left, right in the middle mm -hmm. of the aisle. I, stand, I end up back there. It's kind of a long story. But basically, I end up back in Florida. I find out that the pastor who was minister, uh, that I was ministering for that night, she had a vision of the roof of the church opening like a sardine can being pulled back, and she saw people being lifted. Many people were translated to other nations ah, in that meeting, Ooh, including God. myself. Now, the crazy thing is about two weeks later, we end up getting an email from a pastor in China thanking me for coming because he had the business card. He was able to write this email <laughs> in English explaining, thank, thanking me for coming and inviting me to come back anytime. Now, the crazy thing, I mean, that's, that's crazy. It's, I mean, that's mind-blowing. But even crazier than that is the way that we met was in Israel. Yes. I met you at, down at the Dead Sea Boat. Yes, we were yes. At the same How hotel many years and, ago? That was about four years ago. Mm -hmm. maybe, I go there every maybe year. Maybe five, so. maybe yep. five years ago. And but the reason why I was in Israel at that time, I was meeting with the Chinese church from Shanghai, the place that I've been translated in the spirit. I was meeting with them in Israel. They were meeting and gathering in Israel because they couldn't gather the amount of people that they wanted to in China. So they were coming at that time. They were coming to yeah, Israel. Underground had to be underground. Underground to gather, and that's the reason why I was there. Oh my goodness! Which is. Crazy. I was thinking about that today. The whole reason I was there was meeting was with the Was this China church. thing. It was, it, yes. was, it was initiated by this China connection. Yes, and I met you on that trip. That's what my uh, I was telling you before as we were just talking, that these times in our lives are like dots that you connect. Yes. And my son calls them God dots. Yes. I think he got that from Steve and Hunts. I, yes. And mm -hmm. I think that's the same year when we went to the upper room and the Chinese were able to join us. Wow. It might have been upper. that same group. It may have been the same group I bet it was, I was the same with. group, Because Shelley. they told me later, they said, <laughs> Said, we're from China and we join you in. It was, it was, it was that, that group. Trip. That was the group that I was with. It was a group that you were amazing. with. So this is, is amazing. God yeah. saw that there. He saw mm -hmm. you here. Now I yeah. understand. How did you get back? Okay, so this is, a, I was trying to shorten the story. Yeah. But basically, after the prayer meeting, I walked right down the, the, this is where my faith was. And this is the funny thing. You know, God gives us a measure of faith and we use the faith that we got. Sure. And, my faith was walk back down the street, <laughs> walk back into that elevator, which you first came in. And once you get there, God's going to take you right back to Florida. And he did. He honored my faith. Uh, and I glory. came right back into my body. And the crazy thing about it is the people that were there, because they were being caught up, we asked people, was I standing here the whole time? Because I want to know, yeah. you know, was I Yes, yes. God? They said, we can't tell you because we were in the spirit. Everybody was in the spirit. You glory know, Brother Hagen was God. once preaching. Wow. And uh, this was um, before he got married. Yep. And um, I'm, I'm going to tell it a little bit of detail. He was standing in yeah. a pulpit preaching, and suddenly he was gone. Yeah. And he was in another town, and he saw this young woman that was being considered with another man yeah. and, and things going on that shouldn't have gone on. And he saw it and witnessed it. Yeah. And then he's back in the pulpit preaching, and he says to the people in the congregation, how, how was that last bit of my preaching there. Yeah. I said, oh, it's just fine. So how that worked, I don't know. Right. But that same thing had happened to him. Mm -hmm. Now, um, oh, we don't have time to tell it. We'll do it on the next time. I want to talk to you about, uh, we'll have to do it next week. I want to talk to you about the Tommy Hicks prophecy. Yes. And what he saw would be happening in this glorious church. So you're not going to want to miss Chocolate. Next week. Oh, it's, gonna, it's good. Oh, oh, it's exciting, isn't I'm it? I'm just still Ooh, feasting on realm is God. Increasing. I'm telling you, hallelujah. Glory, glory, to glory be to God. So, so um, I'll be right back. The Holy Spirit still speaks today. He did not pass away with the apostles in the book of Acts. His manifestations are just as necessary now as they were then. These gifts were given to the church and we should earnestly covet them. We are offering a special two book package by Kenneth E. Hagan. He gave gifts unto men and the Holy Spirit and his gifts. As you read these books, you will discover the five fold ministry offices and their function in the body of Christ. 
the role of the Holy Spirit, the nine gifts of the Spirit, and how to flow in them with accuracy. Order this life-changing package today by calling 1-800-972-3447 or by visiting our website at billybrim.org. Just as God led Paul and his team to Macedonia to gain fellowship with the Church of Philippi, we believe that God has led us into fellowship with you. We invite you to join us in a monthly partnership with the Billy Brim Ministries General Club by visiting billybrim.org or by texting your gift to BBL space amount to 28950 and follow the prompts. Shalom. We've been talking about the move of the Holy Spirit that's been prophesied for the last great hours of the church before we're caught away. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible says concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. So God does not want you ignorant of them. I don't know if they teach them in your church. I don't know. Maybe very well taught. But I can tell you some of the best teaching on it is what I learned from Dr. Kenneth E. Hagen. This is a wonderful, uh, many, many lessons on the Holy Spirit and all the gifts. And there are even some um, uh, questions and answers in the back. You can literally take a Bible school course on the Holy Spirit and his gifts here. And it's going to be right. And then these are the gifts, really the gifts uh, through the Holy Spirit of Christ. Apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher. Everybody running down the road calling himself a prophet is not a prophet. So you can look in here and see what prophets in the New Testament are supposed to be like and how they're supposed to be uh, operating. Uh, bless the Lord. So we're making this package available to you uh, at a really good price. The Holy Spirit gift package, uh, only $20 for both books plus postage. But we know that it's going to increase your knowledge and we need it. I need it. Uh, we're selfish in this. Because the more of the body that becomes conscious of the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, we're a body. Yes. Christ is the head. The head, everything has to come from him. But for the actions on earth, he moves through the body. And the connector is like the spinal cord. That's the Holy Spirit. And so we have the word, solid foundation. And the Word teaches us about the Holy Spirit and how He operates. And so you'll not be left in the dark in these wondrous, glorious days. You'll know uh, how He operates. And you can open yourself up to Him by becoming more and more conscious of the unseen realm. And we're, we're going to be talking about that really probably through... March and April, so be sure to join us. Shalom, shalom. Join Dr. Billy Brim and the Worldwide Prayers every Wednesday at noon central for a time of spirit-led prayer. Thank you for joining us today. For more information, go to billybrim.org.